Good afternoon. This is Miss Rashumba with another session of Let's Talk and Grow. Today I have a guest, the female, the black woman speaks, and it's a young lady, and I'm gonna let her introduce herself to you. Hi, I'm Mayel. Okay, and so Mayel is a young lady that I've recently met, but her energy was so high and inspiring that I thought she would be a good one to share with my YouTube friends. But you all know the ritual. I first must give thanks to the Almighty for another opportunity to uplift all of us in ways that we need. So we are the ones we've been waiting for. And you know, I normally start with a poem because I want to show uh, respect to my ancestor energy, early Laverne. So this board is a board, a tribute to him. He was a poet as well. And his first book, which I helped to, to, to put together is called A Rainbow of Poems. And so I'm gonna start today by first, let's show his picture. He's been an ancestor since 2013. So in his honor, I do this show because, you know, our lives are not easy. And when we have to leave, maybe before our time, I can't say when it's your time, it's your time. But I'm gonna honor him today. Okay, so here we go. So this poem is called African American. <coughs> African American, do you still have my back? By Mr. Early Laverne. I see no need to cut anybody any slack. African Americans, do you still have my back? As yourselves, I have almost <clears throat> have most a serious need. We are the best of any productive seed. We are built to achieve and last. History ve reveals that we are bigger than our past. Many of our ancestors are dead and gone. It's up to us to resurrect and reborn. There are devils and demons existing in many a form. Increasing your awareness is the essence of this poem. Being enlightened <clears throat> is your true source of strength. You are made to achieve success at any length. Collective unity is a main priority needed every day. A quality life is here to stay. What is being shared is a spiritual fact. African-Americans, do you still have my back? Separation amongst us have caused destruction and gain. <clears throat> I'm sorry, and pain. We have wrongly used our brains. Elevation begins within, for your godly abilities know of no end. As a people, we can soar to any great heights. We have been well blessed to see the light. Visionaries ever upload into what is right. We should not avoid or desert our plight. When we totally accept our responsibilities, you know then the power of your liberties. Black people, woman, man, boy, or girl. Lay claim to your world. Let us continue to grow, serve, and love. Our distinctions are afar and from high above. Special are we and one of a kind. There exist no limits to our mind. Surely many of us will suffer and be at loss. Making meaningful sacrifices do cost. Just know that we are on the right track. African Americans, do you still have my back? 
Hacheo, Hacheo. <laughs> Early Laverne. One of his classic pieces. You know, <clears throat> I keep saying this, but one day my show will be presented just about him because his story is very, very, what's the word? Intense. He represents what most black men represent in this country. Pain, challenges, but if you make it to a ripe old age, you represent the victory of it. So I hope one day to share a little bit more about who Mr. Laverne is. <clears throat> so, I've been doing the shows the last four or five on the black man speaks. But today I'm gonna talk about the black woman speaks. And so today I have a young black woman, so it's nice to take it from the youth and bring it forward. And I'm gonna have her tell you a little bit about who she is. Uh, first of all, I met her at my gym where I go and exercise. And she struck me as a very grounded, intelligent, and exceptionally beautiful princess. And I know our world is kind of, well, our world is very challenged because black females oftentimes get looked over, ignored, and just kind of get a raw deal. And, you know, because we have a system that does not celebrate what it means to be of African descent, it, it always leaves us as women feeling like we don't matter. So I, my responsibility as an elder is to show and spotlight who we are in different degrees. So I'm starting now with this young lady today and she's gonna tell you a little bit about herself. So Mayel, which is a powerful name. I don't know if it has a meaning, does it Mayel? Yeah, so um, my name is actually an anagram. So uh, my full my full name with my middle name is Mayel Najee Brown. Okay. And so my grandmother's name was Emily Jean Brown. And so that's kind of a shuffling of her name okay. that my mom created for me. Um, she passed before I was born, okay. so I never got the chance to meet her. But that is kind of the ode that um, that my name has like to her. So. Okay, so yeah. Mayel is Emily Shuffle. Yeah. How powerful is yeah. that? Yeah. Wow. So. so, your grandmother, so that's your mother's mother. My mother's mother, yeah. Did you look like her? Um, from the photos I've seen, I'm not too sure. Um, I think that my mom looks a lot like my grandfather, okay. her dad. Okay. Um, but it's kind of tough because there's only like a few pictures I've seen of her, okay. you know, okay. so, and yeah. You know, in the African culture, when a child is born before their uh, grandparents or uh, some family member pass away, they that's what is done. They're given their name. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know, so although we've been away from Africa for many wow. years, there's certain things that we're still doing that reflects it without us even knowing it. Right. Because the beating of the African drum still exists in us. Yeah. So anyway, so tell us a little <laughs> bit about you. Okay, so uh, my name is Mayel, I'm 25. I turned 25 in November. Um, I'm from here, I'm from uh, Elk Grove. Yes. I was kind of born and raised here. Well, I was born in Oakland, raised in Elk Grove. Um, I moved to Vermont actually for Ooh. college, so that's kind of where I came into adulthood. Um, entirely different world. Wow! Yeah. Yes, it is. Vermont. Um, that's yes. North East. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's right up there next to Maine and Canada. Um, so that's kind of where I came into adulthood. Still visiting here for the summers, um, and I just moved back to California actually in September. Ooh. Um, so you just got back? I just got year? back, yeah. Wow. So, and now I'm kind of in my early 20s figuring things out. Um, so that's like a little bit about like where I came up and stuff. Went off to college? Yes. What did you major in? 
Um, I majored in psychology and criminal justice together okay. um, for a forensic psychology okay. degree. Okay. Um, yeah. And did you accomplish your goal? I did. Okay. I did. Wonderful. Yes. Are you applying it now in what you do? No. <laughs> okay. No, I do not do that anymore. I kind of came to a realization that it wasn't really authentic to what I feel is my actual calling. Okay. So I kind of left that world behind. Okay. Um, I just felt like it wasn't allowing me to be my authentic self okay yeah okay yeah so would you say that you you aspire to do it because others thought that would be your goal or over time you change because we do change sometimes you know, you know at your young age you you think one way but by the time two years gone you're not that person anymore. right right it's interesting because i think that work you know i went to college i was 17 years old it's okay. like how do we make our entire life decisions uh, when we're 17 about our entire future? Yeah. I think I kind of have a spot right, uh, right in the mental health aspect of things. Mm -hmm. That has always been important to me. Um, and I think what I was doing, I think I was good at it. Yeah. So that made me feel like it was something I should be doing. Okay. Um, the main thing about it, I did a lot of work um, with inmate counseling inside of prisons yeah. and rehabilitation programs. Um, my last job in that world was at court diversion, so diverting cases out of the criminal justice system into more of a restorative justice okay. type of lens. Okay. That was kind of my last job I was doing. And the real reason I left was because I just always felt a certain pressure to present myself in a way that was palatable to system to the system to a group of people that I really feel like would have never truly understood me right. I ended up having this entire breakdown mm -hmm. um, actually because when at the little college that I went to yes. um, we had to do some career coach advisory meetings before we could actually graduate and yes. um, we had to complete three of those which I think is phenomenal it wow. really was just like with a counselor yeah. and just like talking about how you felt about the last four years and everything wow. Yes, and so during those counseling sessions or those exit counseling sessions yeah. in college, literally like a month away from graduation, I kept going in upset and I would be like, I just hate getting dressed for work in the morning. Mm. That would be the one thing I would always say. I would go in and be like, I hate dressing like this. I hate, you know, the business casual. Like I hate having to dwindle down myself when I go to work. It's like driving me crazy. Yeah. And my account the counselor was like, it sounds like this is important to you. Like you keep bringing this up every time you come in yeah. that you hate getting dressed for work. Right, right. And you might think that that's something minuscule, like, you know, that everyone has to conform to dressing a certain way when they go to their job, right. but it doesn't have to be that way. Right, right. And that was the first time that someone really like slowed me down because I was really upset about it and she could tell. And she was like, have you ever considered doing something else? Oh, and honestly, God. hearing that from at school yeah. you know at college from someone who worked for the college say have you ever considered a different field i was like am i allowed to do that <laughs> i was almost like am i allowed that am i allowed big. to do that yes. you know and she was like yeah and i was like well i don't want to feel like i wasted all this time and she was like it's not a waste you're preparing yourself for the rest of your life and you don't want to if if something even though it might seem as simple as getting dressed for work in the morning and something is bothering you that much about it, maybe you should just reconsider. Yes, yes. And um, that was the first time I even heard that or even like put that idea in my mind that wow. I could actually change my mind about what I was doing. Wow. Um, and, and I ended up um, not taking the job with Port Diversion after graduation. I, um, I ended up leaving that. I always... <laughs> I was always going to school and I always had, I was taking classes, I was doing a research internship, I was working at Court Diversion, I was working at my school's library, but even on top of all of that stuff, I always worked in clothing stores. Mm. I loved the clothing yeah, stores. Yeah. Even though I was stretching myself thin with yeah. work and school yeah. and all this stuff, I somehow made time yeah. for, fashion for fashion because I loved it. Yeah. And so... So what a different yeah. degree from Criminal, yeah. criminal, criminal, yeah, forensic psychology, forensic si psychology, yeah, to fashion design and fashion clothing, right? And so, I completely didn't take the job with um court diversion, it was an internship that I could have, you know, turned into a yeah. job. And I was already working at a clothing store, and I was just like, 
I'm just gonna do that. <laughs> I was like, I'm just gonna work at the clothing store because it makes me happy. I feel like I can be myself. I don't need to boil myself down to something that I'm not yeah. to make other people comfortable. It's so funny that you said that because Carter G. Woodson, who wrote uh, a book called The Miseducation of the Negro. I don't know if you ever heard of that book. I haven't. And one of the quotes in his book is that we give up what we have to go in search of what we never find. Yeah. And I, I'll never forget that because, you see, we ask ourselves, whose narrative are we using to define who we really are? Because if we think about it, we go through life not really being our authentic self, being yeah. what the system says that we should be. Yeah. And somewhere, you know, when you said, I, I was surprised when the, the therapist, kind of a yeah. therapist, said to you, you have a choice. Right, right. You have a choice to make a decision that impacts your life. Right. And uh, it was a surprise to you. It was shocking. You know, sometimes you really get so, especially me, so focused on a goal that you forget about yourself you forget about taking care of yourself or giving your soul the things it needs it wasn't until someone really slowed me down and asked me that question that I even thought about it yeah. like I knew something was making me unhappy right. but I don't think I ever even thought to have that conversation with myself and I don't know if I ever would have until it was like too you know I was so deep in it and so I was really I'm really thankful for my school and for my school's counseling program. The fact that they have that and yeah. that they have counselors that will even go against yeah. the best wishes yeah. of the school. Because, you know, the school, they they want, that's a statistic for them. Who majors in what, does what internship, and then gets a job mm. in that field. That's something that they calculate yeah. and they look at that and they get a score and it makes the college look good. And so the fact that they have people working and that don't always think about the numbers in yeah, that way and yeah. they actually think about the students' best interests, right. that's something I can really appreciate about the school I went to. Wow. I went to a very small private school. Small matter. Yeah, very small private but, school but that you, really cared about us. But so. the question I have yeah. is, where did you lose yourself along the way to end up yeah. all the way to four years of college, all of elementary, high school, yeah. and then by the time you got to college completed what your goal was to, yes. to, to be in the field, you realized that that was not your authentic self. So there was some kind of narrative that was being fed to you yeah. that you believe that did not really help you to understand it from your true self. Yeah. Was it a cultural thing or was it the education in your earlier years of school? Was it where where did that message was it the media where did that message do you think came from that the message kind of steered me in the direction yeah, that i was going to something that was not really who you really are you know it's funny because i think that that was what i am like i i did enjoy the work it was just the mask I would have to put on to do that job. Gotcha. So it's like, I do have a part in me. I really care about populations that don't really get a voice. Okay. And like, for example, our inmates in okay. prison. Yeah. You know, that was a group of people that I was like, if I wanted to help or counsel anybody, I would like to okay. help and counsel, counsel them. Okay. And so I still have that in me. I still am a bleeding heart. I always am rooting for the underdog. You know, I try to help out where I can and I think that still is important to me okay. it was just not right it's now. the society right. the society will not accept someone like me yeah. performing that job yeah. and, and so that's the unfortunate part of it I like what you said mm -hmm. what I understand too is what you've achieved and achieving your goal yeah. and getting the degree in it does not mean it's lost just because right. you've taken time out to do something that you really enjoy. Yes. Maybe what you're saying to yourself is, I'm gonna relax and be a fashion diva yeah. for a while, but yes. what you have is still in you, it was not lost. Right. As a matter of fact, as you move forward, you will realize at maybe 30, 35, that you are ready now. Right. And, right. you, and you don't care what society says, you c will create the, the way you want it to be. Yeah. Because that's the power of who you are. Right. And who we are. And I used to believe that I had, 
I used to think, oh, I wasted time because I didn't do what I thought I was doing. But when I look back at my experience, I gained so much. I gained so much independence, first of all, by moving across the country. I was, you know, doing my own thing. And, yeah. and you know, I really grew as a person. I, I, I went through so much, yes. so much in those, I mean, four years of college and then I stayed around for four more years. So the eight years that I wow. lived out there, you know, I just... And how it, was it as a black girl? Yeah, black young that's woman. another Tell thing, me. you know. It's interesting because Vermont, there's like no black people. Yeah. You know, the town I was living in, Burlington, is a little bit, just a little bit more diverse because it's a college town. So people come from different states and stuff, mm -hmm. kind of like how I was there. But it was hard. You know, I think my whole life I've kind of, I've had to deal with a lot of internalized racism that I had towards myself that yeah. I kind of, you know, I mean, a narrative. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even just like going to Sims or yes. going to Elk Grove and then Vermont, yes. you know, all these places, I think I was like, Search. It, it was hard because I've always yes. been kind of an alternative person like even when I was younger I felt like I didn't really belong yes. in any type of group or with any type of people so you know I don't think like back then like a sense of community was necessarily important to me because mm -hmm. I think I was just so lost that I didn't even know to know that that could be like healing in a way mm -hmm. um, but after you know growing up and and just coming to realize I think also after dating um, a, a boyfriend that I had outside at the time. of your race was it no he was he was like my first boyfriend that was actually black because okay. I had dated two white guys before okay. out there okay because that would be easy to do yeah you know and yeah so actually dating someone and then you know it just like opened my perspective opened my mind yes. and then after that point I was just like wow like I need more I need my community, yes, you know, yes. I would like to have a sense of community right. that you honestly like it's it can't be replicated right. other than being with your people right. and and sometimes it that I think that was hard for me. It still can be because I um, I just feel like just being like an alternative person like I have some alternative music. I dress alternative clothes. I have just you know, I'm just like this one off weirdo. I've always been the weird one, you know, um, but and, you know, I just wanted to say, yeah. when you were young, a beautiful, educated black woman, yeah. this, this becomes a very much of a challenge. Yeah. Especially if you wanted to stay within your own culture. Yeah. Because there's a system that makes sure that, you know, sometimes the girls are educated and moved along where the boys are kept back. And as a matter of fact, they're the ones that end up in that same system, the criminal system yeah. that you are working towards. Right, right. So, you know, it, it becomes very hard because you have limited selection yeah. to choose from or for them to choose you in this society. Right, right. And even now, recently, there's been a popularity of black women dating white men mm -hmm. more frequently than ever before in my time I've seen. And so, you know, understanding yourself, understanding your culture, understanding why that would ever even happen. Yeah. It will lead me to my next question. How much do you know about the history of black people in this country and just history of black people in general, yeah. Africa? Uh, you know, not much because it's, it's honestly, it's intentional how little we are taught about our own culture, our own history. It's intentional Correct. that we don't learn about our own culture. Intentional, and, she said. Yeah. And you know, it gets so far removed because I could ask my mom and it's like, I don't know how much she knows. Right. And then even like my grandmother, how much would she have known? It's like, right. when do we actually get to a point where we were actually connected to our roots? I just recently took a, the, a DNA test to actually see, mm. you know, I, it drives me wild because it's like, what other culture do they literally need to break down their DNA sequence to know what they are? Wow. It's not common with anyone, with anyone. but black but people. Black people here in America it's sad and the Caribbean it's yes yeah. it's sad it's really yeah. sad and intentional yeah. and and you could see the effects yeah. of it on relationships it's like criminal it, it is it really <laughs> it's is criminal it feels so criminal it and really is. you know even one time um actually when I was in college mm -hmm. um I actually took a trip to Africa mm -hmm. um I went for a secular and sacred religion and culture studies class what and, country um we went to Zanzibar okay. um we went to Dar es Salaam okay 
Pemba, which was like a very small island. It's the East Africa, correct? Yes. 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 And then the Muslim um, area. Very yes. Muslim. <laughs> yes. And it just was mind blowing yeah. to see the difference between Africans yes. and then like black people. Like yes. it's so different. I mean, there and was. I, I like the way you said Africans and black people because the Africans see us as black people. Right. They will not say really that we are African. Right. And it's because. We're disconnected. We're di it's different. Yeah. It's almost like I could say we're not. Like it's different. And, and, and so trying to reintegrate, yeah. you know, back into your culture, back into your roots and your history, yeah. has been something that I now consciously make an effort to learn about, yes. um, because it's just mind blowing to me how how a society can just erase someone's history and yeah. why they would do that. Right. And what what would be the person who benefits when they have done that? And so yeah. what you just said is so huge and it's going to become like a lifetime journey yeah. to find out who you are. And what you can do is make it in an exciting, exploratory way because your culture, our culture, yeah. is one of the most amazing yeah. culture there is. Yeah. When you start to delve in and you will see why a people, a system, would want to build their empire on our shoulders Right. And are not knowing who we are. And then not give credit where credit is due. Well, that's I, part of it. Yeah. Because that's where your power is. Yeah. It's knowing who you are and the truth of what happened. Right. And then I was watching a video actually once um, recently and it was basically talking about, you know, in history, even when we look back at human history, mm -hmm. it's never spoken about like how much, like, like there was a quote where it was saying, you know, we never talk about African mathematics, we never talk yes. about African historians, we never talk about the richest man to ever have existed in the world was African. Mansa Musa. It's just like things yeah. that, you know, they, it's like society. You it. Yeah, they want to have people view us in a certain way. Correct. And so it's they like try to change history That's to right. make it suit, fit this puzzle that they want That's to show, correct. even though it makes no sense, you right. know? It's not like you know well and and you know the way you said it is so clear because it's like playing uh a game with the 49ers against uh, the another team yeah i don't know all <laughs> me either I'm, yeah <laughs> but if you if the 49ers win do you think they're going to call the next team over and tell them their secrets and their strategies to have right. won them no it's secret so, intel right and and so that's kind of where, where we're at right now they're yeah. never gonna let you know your powers but your powers are visible because if you know the journey of what has happened then you will understand why you're still here and not extinct right because everything is set up in order to be subjugated and to be used even the prison system is used to maintain privatization, money. Someone benefits when the young boys go there. Yeah. You know, and the schools benefit when the children don't learn and they are A AEPs and, and, you know, um, they also benefit when black boys and black girls eventually become adults and they don't see each other. You know, and if they come together, they are usually fighting. You yeah. know, there's a lot, there's a high level of divorce. Yeah. But in the homes, black men and black women are really going at e each other. Yeah. And so the children that come out of it become broken and they too it's end up. Intergenerational Yeah, trauma. so you have to be able to connect those dots in yes. a keen way. So I always say, you know, the thing about the schools in this system is I, I learned to read. And what I chose to read, spiritually guided, is how I was awakened to who I am mm -hmm. and what has happened. And so the power is knowledge. Yeah. You know, knowledge. And when, if you're, the, if you're from K to 12, if you're to learn the stories about your people, yeah. then you would have chosen maybe even better what you were going to do that four years of college. Right, right. You know, so there's a system that creates this confusion and makes you feel like, you can't even, you didn't have that power yeah. to say, I, I don't really want to do this. Right, right. How many people could change their mind? Uh, many years ago, a therapist said to me when I was heading to Africa, he, you know, I was kind of apprehensive because I was going to Nigeria and I started hearing all these negative things about what may happen. I was going alone and, yeah. and I was terrified. And I'm like, you know, he says, look, you could get all the way to the plane door and change your mind. 
that's the power you have as an individual. Right. And I thought, oh my gosh, really? And the power of choice. Yes. Yeah. Autonomy. Autonomy. We're adults. You know, for all of our childhood, we kind of have this lack of autonomy. And so as adults, it's almost jarring to figure that you have that, you know? Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. And, you, and just like with anything else, it takes practice. It takes the practice. more you start acting out your autonomy, the easier it will become. And just the word autonomy. Okay, if, explain what that word means because some of our audience that will watch it, you know, if you're not well read, yeah. if you have not spent time in a four year Ivy League, yeah. you're not gonna, certain words just go over your head and you, you, they end up paying attention to your fashion. So there's a language that we must learn to speak to even our own people. Right. Because right. There, there, uh, there's a book I read many moons ago, it's called The Pedagogy of the Oppressed by, uh, Paulo Friero, he was a Brazilian, you know, because there's a language that our people must understand when we talk to them. Otherwise, if we use the language of the oppressors, mm. you know, it goes over their head and they're focused on your face, right. what you're wearing, and rather than speaking to them. So, language. Yes. Language. You know, more simple and direct for autonomy is just free will. Freedom. 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 Auto. One, yes. freedom to be who you are. You think it and you do, and it. You do it. You you have a, a gut feeling and you act it out. And I love that gut feeling because, you know, some of our people come out, they're not educated, especially some of our black men. Not because they're not intelligent, it's right. because the system on purpose made sure that beyond third grade they couldn't no. read. So they became the most sexiest, cutest boys in <laughs> class but they couldn't read and comprehend. So what's the effect of that later on in life when a black youth goes up and he can't read and he cannot interpret, you know, to function in this society? How does that look with his wife and in the homes and, yeah. and so forth? How does that show up? Do you, have you ever given a thought to that? You know, the first thing that came to my mind is actually a pairing of that type of individual with an, like, you know, an educated mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. I feel like that, causes almost like fighting because of that it's almost like it's almost like this weird i don't even jealousy isn't the word but competitiveness yes. in the household competitive you know because you know you know i feel like there's this weird thing with men and women where it's like men have this con this con yeah i don't know men are <laughs> they are our protectors right right they are the strength they're the guardians of us and against you know evil coming to us right. as this woman and this so I think this is a clever device that this system has used to make sure that any home that you see us trying to thrive in, there is arguments and debate yeah. and fighting. And the effects of it on our children is yeah. staggering. Yeah. So it's been weaponized right. on purpose. Yeah. And that alone is worth studying. You know, I think what I was, the word I was trying to think it was in jealousy before, but insecurity. Insecurity. So, you know, if, if, the man feels like he's maybe less educated or less intelligent or not able to provide mm. in that way that you know society is expecting of him insecurity comes out and that can be a confusing emotion and taken out on the woman who might feel is more intelligent or might feel is more in control you know and that can cause that you know friction, conflict, right. yeah, conflict and so Speaking from that level now, how does the woman that is articulate, intelligent, mm. handle a situation like that? Because number one, we have less men to choose from in our society because this society, well, based on what we've talked about, is a society that on purpose is working to subjugate a people. Right. And the first thing, the first group of, that they try to subjugate is gonna be the black man. Yeah. And so the effects of it is, it's shown in many ways, not being able to get a job, a hold a job because the energy, putting on a mask to go right. to work. And a man is a man. Man is going to say, I am a man no matter what I know. And so in this home, I am a man no matter how intelligent you may think you are. So the question I have to an educated black woman, how does one approach 
find in 80, I didn't ask if you were married, I take it you're not. No, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the audience may be looking at you and saying, wow, that is a beautiful young lady and that is totally out of my league. Yeah. So the question becomes, and then that beautiful lady is saying, hey, it's Saturday night, I don't have a day. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't have a day. I feel yeah. like I almost sometimes intimidate. Exactly. But I'm not, you know, it can you be very... what she said? Yeah. She feels like sometimes she is intimidating because she's too much for him. And he, he and she'll say, you know, but I, I, I don't mind if you don't have, you just, you just have a high school diploma. It's okay. But he may say, no, because it's been weaponized that you are going to be uh, more enlightened, more sharper than he and his male ego right. is going to be affected by it. And it's sad too because, you know, I would never be that way. It's, it's almost like going back to like what I felt like I was good for the criminal justice was like, I have a very, at least I, I believe that I have a very unbiased heart yes. and I can look at anyone with a blank slate no matter what you or what you've done or how you feel about how educated or any of these things I nearly have an open heart for all people so it's kind of like you know it makes me sad I don't want people to feel yeah. that's why I try to be so nice and you know smiling not like I'm trying to but I feel like that's almost the personality I've developed to just feel more welcoming yes. you know and just that it's okay so you see what she just said she's kind of had to slow her tone of her height beautiful powerful mm -hmm. energy down in order to be accepted yeah. to be accepted and that too is weaponized because then the question becomes where is her authentic self because mm -hmm. she may not necessarily want to be that she wants to be who she is but because especially as a black woman black women have had to learn how to be a chameleon in many situations and so when you have to do that in love in your home you know in, in the beginning it may start off kind of not so bad you know but when children come and you say okay my hair is down now and what comes out of that yeah. the effects of that is where the children start to see it yeah so i i think i think we have problems that we must really look at there's so many and the effects of it is fragmented it's called fragmented love, fragmented situation based on where we've been as an enslaved people. Mm -hmm. And there's so many areas to be to pick and work through. That one there is very, very serious. Yeah. And you know, you're just coming out of the educational system and now you're trying to maneuver in the world and see where you stand. Um, I, I, I would like to say, well, hate to lose you if you have to go to the other culture for a mate. Yeah. That's always the challenge, you know. Uh, I know a lot of women now, they are dating, black women, they're dating men from Africa. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they marry them, they go there, marry them, and they wait on this long, you know, two years, three years to get them here. Yeah. So now you end up just waiting, always waiting. So. I believe that as African people living in America, I'm an immigrant from the Caribbean, but it's kind of similar. We're all descendants of the enslaved. Um, we're always going to be working through those issues. So even though we may have the necessary skills to make a living, we must also spend a lot of time studying what happened to us as a people because we can't be the best parent unless we know. We can't be the best wives unless we know. We can't be the best neighbor to each other, sister, or black male, black woman, female friendship. Yeah. Because, you know, I'll even say, I would like to just be friends with black male without it always being this yeah. energy that, you know, I, I love you or you love me or can we get some, yeah. just friendship they've set us up that we can't even be friends and you know what like came to my mind when you were saying that I feel like a part of it can be too um because there's different societies in the world that are more community based and then there's different societies in the world that are more individualistic and yes I think you know coming from our roots and our cultural roots 
coming from a community-based society right. and then trying to fit that culture into an individualistic one, which we have here in the United right, States, right, right. it doesn't it meld. Does and so that's where you get that confusion yeah, or confusion. all of that stuff is because the culture that is like in your blood and then who we are. Yes, and then the one you're trying to fit into, yeah. they narr don't it's match. a narrative. Yeah, it's, and it doesn't work. Right. You know, and that's why you get those problems. Yeah. And you know, there's there's other cultures too, I believe, that have come and made that work. Like I think of Asian Americans, yeah. they still have that sense of community, that community structure that they have even in, you know, in actual Asian countries that right. they've integrated here in America right. that they get to almost keep their culture. Exactly. Whereas for us, we don't get that, no, you know? No, and it's on purpose that we don't get that. Yeah. It's on purpose because if we were born here, yeah. say you are, you know, versus coming in here right. and, you know, some of them go and marry their women right. and bring them back right. here. And then they have their weekend school, even though their children go to their school, the, the regular public school. They have their weekend school. They have their language. Mm -hmm. They have so many things yeah. to keep their family intact. Right. But anytime we decide to do something amongst our people coming together, then, you know, the system will find ways to make sure they infiltrate it and tell you, no, that's not a good idea. Right. right. And, and so we have to be on purpose about what we need to do for ourselves and our people. And I hate to say, but they have us that when we do decide to come together um, and meet up to, to, uh, to empower and teach, then we have the conflict of, you know, it's male over female, light over dark, you know, mm -hmm. there's all these separation that start to come up that makes it difficult that ends up, we end up just Keep throwing up our arms right. and just going home. Right, right. So there's a reason from 1619 to now we're still where we are. Yeah. Because and if we were to sit back and think about the different ways that a system makes a limit off our shoulders and our ability not to know the truth from sports. You know, if you think about the young men playing sports, um, they're making millions of dollars. You're being paid millions. Now you're getting paid millions, you know their producers and all of that are getting paid billions. Yeah. Because before that when you were in school they didn't want to educate you. Right. So why all of a sudden they gonna give you a lot of money? Okay, and so that way, uh, you know, on, on women, you know, when we start to feel down and feel not beautiful enough, what do we do? We go shopping. You know, I'm gonna go and buy something to make me feel good and look good, okay? So we're going that way. And then on top of it now, the foods, <laughs> our diet. You know, our diet, because when you're not feeling good inside, guess what, you may start eating a little bit more. Yeah. You know, and you're young, but we too, if you're 45 and pushing 50 and find yourself still alone, there's gotta be some certain things that you use for comfort. Right. And in the comfort of that, creates dialysis centers. Mm. When I was growing up, there were no dialysis centers. Have you ever seen Soul Train and back in, everyone were very slender. Yeah. So it's important for us to understand history. Right. Tell me one powerful book you read that just left you huh. like, aha. Uh -huh. Like, well, yeah. I mean, I don't, I, that's my one thing that I have a quarrel with, but I do not read a lot. Okay. I, I am not a fan of reading. I'm trying, actually, right now, the book I've been reading, I've been trying to read is Malcolm X biography. Yes. And I'm like, this is the most I've read a book since the Twilight okay. series. It's okay. like embarrassing. But yeah, I am not a big do reader. Do you think that is because going to school, you had to spend a lot of time reading? No, reading. I've always just liked reading. Okay. And it's, it's, almost impressive how I got through school without reading. Oh. I, I'm, I'm such a good writer that I can almost convince anyone that I've read a lot, but I don't read a lot. I, there's so many books. I never got a textbook in, in college. I never got a book. Wow. I just learn in a different way. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a different, I don't learn in that way okay. as easily, I think, but. So tell me, what, how would you, Tell me how you think you will learn about our history more um, 
than going I, to some books? I watch a lot of videos. Like okay. I watch a lot of uh, documentaries, okay. little mini docu series, okay. podcasts. I'm a very like visual, so like YouTube. Okay. I'm a very visual learner. And maybe traveling. Traveling. I mean, traveling. I have traveled yeah. there. You know, I that secular and sacred class was an elective. Okay. I didn't have to do that, but okay. I wanted to okay. experience so that. So person. you know, experiences, talking to people, yeah. meeting people like you. Yeah. You know, instead of going to the book, finding someone yeah. that has the knowledge or watching a video online that is not right, by any right, random right, person right. but an actual legit fact based and fact check video and critical thinking yes always if you're not thinking critical about things you're right, doing something right, wrong you should right. always have that critical you know just i believe in that and um you know yeah well she's made me a little believer because she <laughs> i walk with a book <laughs> yeah. My mom reads all the time. She has yeah. so many books, and I just like didn't inherit yeah, that like yeah. love for reading. I've yes. always been kind of more visual. And you're from the generation that there's so many other options. I mean, Reddit. I don't know if you've ever been on Reddit, but you can talk to anyone from anywhere in the world wow. and see what they have to say about something, or you know, it's social Reddit. media. Reddit. Yeah, it's like a. Reddit. I love Reddit. I'm sure some people know yeah, Reddit. Yeah, so Reddit is, is, Reddit is a. It's it's almost like uh, it's it's a social. It's like Central. a it's like a web page where right. you talk and you post and stuff and there's so many subreddits for everything. So okay. you could have a subreddit for anything. Really anything. Wow. So you people just so go you find and give groups. Their opinions yeah. And it's just it's just share. everyday people who have communities, little communities based on different things that they like. Wow. Or that they talk about. But thanks for thankful to I love her. Reddit. I, I, yeah, I would never have known that. I'm so from the, yeah. the old school that you know, the book I'm reading right now. Yeah because uh, they, they, they've all, there's a whole, many months ago they said, if you want to hide something from an African or a black person, you put it in a book. In a book, yeah. And if, if you think back in history, you know, the main thing they said is, let's not teach them to read. Yeah. You know, so that was always very important to us to know how to read. Right. But they didn't see these technological yeah. times where, you know, <laughs> you have so many other options. Yeah. But um, the book I'm reading right now is called The Deep South. Uh-huh. And it was a book written in the ninth, late 30s, early 40s. Yeah. There were two, uh, four uh, Harvard graduates, sociologists, a white couple and a black couple. Both of them spent two years in the Deep South. The white couple was amongst wow. the whites, researching and just looking at the whole setup of the white people, right. the different upper, high class, middle class, low class, and did the same in the black. Right. And drew and wrote their theses on that. So the book is the sum of that. Yeah. How it's important to me is, um, at the, you know, because I get mine for reading and there's some videos too. Yeah. Now, videos code in books and then yeah, I go find right. the books and, and I read <laughs> the it. references. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah. uh, but what I got from it is it gives me shortcuts where I would spend my time trying to see it, you know. Now I know a lot more about certain groups of people, why right. they act a certain way, why they do certain right. things. So for that reason is why books have been valuable. And I I like it's something that uh, challenge that I have with reading is something I don't like. Because yes. I do agree there's something about learning things on the internet. You can't totally capture right. like some you know, a study right. done in the thirties where they're writing about it in the thirties, you can't that, that's a piece of time. Yes. And so to have access to that time you have to read the book. But that you would can't, be research and if right. you're gonna do something different. Right. Now and you, you know, I want to read more because I do believe it's you know important mm -hmm. um that's why i'm trying to read this not, and i i'm enjoying the book i really am and i'm yeah. learning a lot even from these first few chapters yeah. i just have to push myself to actually read it because i think we're i think you know these days with the internet attention span is so short yes and that it's like to yeah. sit and read a book is a lot yes but i want to push myself to do that more because i do believe like yeah. reading is like a superpower it is a superpower <laughs> yeah and um but you know we've been here at it for a while. Yeah. This, this, this may require two or three different yes. sessions. You know? I would and I, I would love to bring you back on again, yes. and you know we could talk some more because what you're speaking and the level you're speaking is very provocative, and it's very good for the audience. It's very good for young people. It's very good for older people to see that you 
know, our generation that's coming up behind us, they're doing yeah. real well. <laughs> you know, so we give honor and we thank your mother. And you came from a two-parent family? Yeah, but it's mostly me and my mom. Yes, <laughs> yes. You see, that mom thing is very powerful. So one day she will be a mom. So we're so happy to see that our community have this bright, young, intelligent, futuristic young lady, Mayel. And so Mayel, give me, uh, <laughs> let me ask you one word that would describe you. You know, it could be um, what you hope to be, what you, who you are, one yeah. special word that would describe you as a young oh, African-American. Look at her smile, <laughs> everyone. Um, you know, the word alternative comes to mind. I used to always kind of hold a lot of shame and guilt about that, about being the different one. Yes. But now it's something I'm proud of. Okay. So Alternative, she yeah. says. Yeah. So how would you interject the alternative? How would you say, are you the alternative to... How would you use that word in reference to yourself? I am the alternative. How would that apply? Like I'm not, I've, I've stopped trying to fit into the boxes, okay. you know? So I'm not the alternative. Free. I am free to be I'm me. I'm free to be me no matter what that means. 24-7. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yay! Oh yeah. my gosh. So, you know, I could go on and on, but I don't know, the time is coming up on us and I don't want the videos to be so long <laughs> that uh, the people say, oh, here she goes again. But I hope today what you heard from Ms. Mayel will keep you tuning in and listening to, who, uh, to ways that we can learn. Because uh, talk and learn is so important and we don't have time to do that anymore everyone is texting uh we're we're in kind of different worlds so this this is a, a special um opportunity for me to be able to be courageous and to speak to the intergenerational people and find out what they're thinking and use their thoughts to empower and keep us going and keep the new ones coming up going as well and as you know, folks, at the end of my uh, program, I'd like to read one of my poems. And uh, let's see what I have here. I was kind of wanting to pull from my book, but something say, let me do one of my new poems. It's not that new, but it's not in my book. And it's called... Let me stay for one more day. This poem is about a vacation that I had gone on alone to an all-inclusive uh, hotel in the Caribbean, not Jamaica. And I was alone in the all-inclusive. So what does that mean for a black woman to be alone in the all-inclusive? Okay, well, this poem will tell you. It's called, Let me stay for one more day. Let me stay for one more day and sleep the aches and pain away. It's Saturday, no more work in sight today. Just grown up swimming, laughing, yes, having some grown up play. I too looking to join the sun, the, this unadulterous play. Got the swimsuit on with little ease. Ease, ego, ease upon my tired soul. Finding peace is not always that, that easy to do. What black woman is given the very best? Who recognizes the stress in her face and the droopiness of her gentle shoulder on her petite frame? Who claims this one? To whom does this woman belong? Why is she here alone? I will not discuss my pains to you. I need not your pity for my position is clear. It's not solely my choice is why I am here. But if I could stay one more day, then maybe I can share what caused the black people to be alone here. A 
among the lovers holding tightly onto each other. I say, please let me stay one more day. Although I do not fully belong alone here, I paid my dues to be pampered and respected. That is the only way I was allowed entry in their fantasy places meant for the white woman, the wealthy, and the famous. But it has been your boldness, black sister, that has caught them by surprise. How can you be alone and abandonedly beautiful at the same time? It is truth that brought me here, giving me its blessing and protection, saying, have no fear. Saying, black queen, your time is near for all humans to bow whenever you appear. For it is clear that without you, the original woman, no other race would be here. You are the gift that keeps on giving. So stay and play as long as you would like. The world is watching and taking instructions from your plight. So another session is up. And I'm doing my best and I'm doing my part. So I give thanks for this opportunity. A rainbow of poems, mm -hmm. early Laverne. And as you can see, my little symbol, we must try to always do our part by helping each other. Each one help one. So thank you, Mayel. Of course. Thank you for your opportunity to come and share with me. Yeah. Hey, you may see her clothes on the fashion <laughs> runway soon. You yeah. never know. <laughs> Be blessed until we meet again. Asheo.